Hey guys, Tyre here. This is why you should get a Steam Deck right now. have my switch out today as well. We get a comparison of the two. Dum dum. Steam Deck. Amazing. I am having so much fun with it. I've had it for a few days now. So I just want to tell you more about it. The Steam Deck is a banger of a handheld. An amazing library of games. PS4 level of graphics. This thing is juicy as hell. The Steam Deck definitely feels like playing on your PS4 or on the handheld. Doom Eternal, the MC5 special. The design for this bad boy is sleek as hell and it feels really comfy to hold in your hands. Especially with that piece of meat behind your thumb. It feels ergonomically friendly in almost every way compared to the Switch. Which by now feels like a piece of thin tech like an iPad. Beyond the Jew joysticks, D-pad and other buttons at the front, similar to the Switch, it's got the shoulder buttons like R1 and 2, L1 and L2 at the top, similar to any existing controllers out there in the market already. But what's more is that there are two back buttons on each side, hence giving you the liberty to assign whichever actions according to the game you're playing on. Which for me, I like to exploit these buttons during my FPS, as some of the quick switches are not as agile, like this weapon wheel in Doom Eternal, or not the best idea when taking out Hitler's henchmen on Wolfenstein. As there are three models available, I went with the one and only that has the anti-glare screen. As I do get annoyed when I can't see what's happening on screen due to light reflections and trust me, as someone who's working in Asia, there are way too much lights in these city areas. So spare no expense in this case for the best gaming experience. Now for this bad boy, just like the Switch, it gives you the option to insert micro SD cards, meaning for those chunky monkey sized games that are DR2 and GTA 5, you can have a lot of games installed outside of the internal memory, making this the TA100 machine with games. Lots of games. With a lot of the consoles back in days, when you max the volume, the speakers can shut it and fill most of the times to keep the decibels at bay because the output is way too much for those machines to handle. But of course, with the evolving technology, things have improved and when I'm at home, I then pair it up to the AirPods and just let the sound flow freely to my ears. Oh yes, the Mick Gordon soundtrack is awesome as always. Rip and tear for live mo- For the interface, you can sort your library of games, go to a Steam store to purchase, and as you know, when the seasonal sale hits, you just sweep up anything within your vicinity. And for those of you who are not familiar with the Steam store, their discounts can be really, really steep, like journey to the center of the earth steep. I'm sure most of you are aware of this, so this is definitely a perk I enjoy over the PlayStation and Nintendo stores. Meanwhile, on those game pages, it gives you additional info as to whether the games are verified, meaning whether games can run, run with some issues, or not tested at all. As the existing game library is huge and Steam had stated they slowly rolled us out for more games as part of what they do to support the deck. However, does this mean the games will be flawless? No, absolutely not. For example, when I was playing on DMC5, a verified game, it can still crash once or twice here and there, just like any PC games, so bear this in mind. One of the reasons why I got this was to play Xbox games. For example, Titanfall 2, Dead Rising 3, as much as I like this gem of a handheld, I do have a few things to nitpick upon. Given the behemoth size and weight of a console as compared to a Switch, man, that thing feels like a piece of cone mat with buns. If you're gaming for more than an hour, depending on posture as well, your hands, wrists and arms will get a little sore after a while, so I suggest you not to hold it above your head while playing because dropping this bad boy on your face could likely incur some major damage. Another thing is the fan. The fan definitely gets real loud at times, and I say 
players relatively frequent. Of course this is understandable because this happens on Switch as well, this baby you gotta cool down a bit you see. Last but not least, not all games are supported with some of the games you gotta patch up the files on the back end which can be troublesome but thanks to YouTube you can always resort to solutions there. Now this is something I can recommend without a second thought. Playing the same games like Doom Eternal with the MC5 on the handheld felt special. It's something I would only dream of as a kid and it's worth experiencing on the go. While running on high FPS it can drain the battery dry in no time. Let's say Doom Eternal running at high settings like 60fps will only get you around 90 minutes of playtime give or take as it also depends on other factors like the brightness of the screen, whether the Wi-Fi is on etc but it's worth it. This console feels like back in the days when you jump from a Game Boy to a Game Gear. The amazing graphical fidelity, the buttery smooth gameplay, the gigantic amount of games, mind you that these can also run on the PC so switch to whichever platform you desire of course. As we don't have the successor to switch yet, I'd say this is the closest thing all gamers deserve. And it's all the Nintendo games like Smash Bros, Pokemon, Zelda and oh yes Tears of the Kingdom is coming so and so I'm about to cry. There are way too many releases in this first half of 2023. If you love games go get this handheld. Don't sit on it because you get a lot of joy out of it. Don't waste life just game. Thanks for watching this video and hope it's been helpful. Kindly like the like button and sub to my channel for more stuff like this. Check out my other videos on my channel and I'll see you guys soon. Stay safe and bye now. Peace.